Hello and welcome again to ESS students from all around the world, wherever you are, from Shanghai to San Francisco, or from Stockholm to Santiago to Sydney. Welcome. And of course, a special welcome to all of the ESS students taking the exam this year at ECS Abu Dhabi. And a shout out to all of my friends over in Bangalore, India, over at CIS, Canadian International School. I know you have Miss Rupa and she has been doing a great job with you in getting you ready for this year's ESS exam. So let's go in and take a look now at some of the tips for this year's ESS exam. Bearing in mind that I've given lots of tips going back over 10 years, and I will link those videos to this one, but let's take a look at when the exam is happening this year. And it's happening on May 2nd, you will be taking paper one. Paper one is your case study. You'll be provided with the resource booklet. You'll have to go in there and extract some data from it Read your graphs carefully. Please have a calculator. Please have a ruler. Read carefully, make connections, and complete your paper one on the afternoon. Then go home, get a good night's rest, and spend your Saturday and Sunday preparing for the all-important paper two. It carries 50% of your final score in ESS. And it's happening in the morning of May 5th. You'll be taking section A and B, section A. Again, you need a ruler, you need a calculator for those simple calculations. Be careful, read those graphs carefully, and then you come to the all important section B, where you have that big nine mark question. And especially when you approach that question, it's useful to make these kinds of connections. And I'm going to share some videos and link them to this one and put captions below so that you can access a whole range of videos and a playlist but it's important that you read your ESS guide if you've never done that before. Just take some time and read through all of your topics and all of the learning outcomes and make some notes right there on that guide if possible. Then make connections. For example, learn how the biotic system is connected to the abiotic system. Take, for example, the very good case study of the Wolves of Yellowstone Park. It's an example of how when the wolves were removed, the population of elk rose. And when the population of elk rose, then that had effect on the entire food chain, but it also had effect on plants and it had effect on the soil as well and the, the riverbank areas where animals came to drink. So there are lots of connections between things that happen in the biotic system and how those affect the abiotic system. But then, why did the wolves get removed in the first place? It was human intervention that caused that. And why did the wolves get reintroduced? Again, human intervention. So human society is very closely connected to these natural systems. And we impact these systems, sometimes in positive ways, sometimes in negative ways. And very often when problems are created, Environmental managers have to look at ways to solve these problems and that's what this course is really about. Yes, we understand the problems, we want to understand the science of the environmental issues, what's going on with them, but this ESS course is really about understanding how we can solve some of these problems moving forward. And this is where we need some kind of management. I've shared videos before about the ABCs of pollution management or I took the IBO's well-designed pollution management model and simplified it into what I call the ABC of pollution management, where you can try to avoid the pollution problem in the first place. If you can't avoid it from happening by changing technologies or whatever you need to do, at least you can block the pollutant from getting into the environment. And if you can't do that, the last resort is to clean up whatever mess and to restart with something new. So this is what we call the ABCs of pollution management. Then with protected areas, I'm going to share with you a video where I speak about the specs for the design of a protected area. Over on this side here, I have two other useful acronyms. For example, if you are looking to protect an endangered species, you might first of all want to 
educate people about what might have happened with species that have gone extinct in the past. For example, like the passenger pigeon, the dodo bird, the elephant bird and other species that have become extinct in the recent past. You can educate people about how to conserve the environment. And if you can't do that, and if that doesn't work well, or you need to support that, then you can regulate by using taxes or laws. And of course, once you put laws in place, those laws need to be enforced and they need to have penalties that are sufficient to dissuade people from engaging in unlawful behavior, like poaching, for example. And then finally, and very much what we would call a technocentric or a very advanced technocentric fix would be to bring the species back from extinction. And believe it or not, there's a lot of research out there about de-extincting species. One, for example, is the woolly mammoth. And there's a nice TED talk on this where researchers are arguing that by bringing back the woolly mammoth from extinction and putting it into its natural habitat in the area of Siberia, we will in fact make a contribution to changing the vegetation in that area and then ultimately reducing climate change. So lots of connections happening there in that one talk. And there are many such good TED Talks out there where environmental managers take on particular case studies. They tell you the story of the case and they talk about the successful approaches to management. And very often these approaches to management, these fixes as we call them, involve a combination of law, economics and perspectives. These are the three HL lenses, actually, that HL students next year will have to focus on for the first time in exams. But beyond these three fixes, we can also call them the BATS, the behavioral fix, where we educate people, the administrative fix, where you put laws and regulations in place, the structural fix, where you might change the entire governance of an area that might be corrupt or anti-environment in general, and you need to change the whole system. And then, of course, my favorite is the technical fix, where we approach the problem with science and technology and find a way to solve it. So let's go in and take a look at some of those videos that I spoke about and how you can link to them to help you in this year's examination. Good luck to everyone in this year's ESS examinations.